I know once you once you get the fever of, of, of hoisting the cup and and bringing it around the area and, and, and showing it around and showing it off, I think uh, you want to do it again and again. Uh, it's not the it's not the easiest easiest trophy to win. It's probably one of the toughest, but I think once you get there, it's it's a, it's it's a, it's a habit and it's contagious. It's always nice bringing it back to your hometown. That's what everybody does. They, once you win the cup and and you have the chance, you, you bring it back to to where you come from, so you can you can bring it around the area and let everybody see it, and everybody take pictures, and and, and for them to, to live the surreal life of, of seeing the cup and, and uh, having fun with it. My room goes just a little area, uh, just under the bridge there. If you go over the bridge, I think you're out of Mimico, they say, but uh, Mimico is just a uh, blue-collared area. Everybody likes the blue goose, they like their beers, and they go to work from 9 to 5, and they go to the goose and have some beers. They all love hockey, they love the Leafs, I know that, and uh, it's just, that's what it is. For me, I started around the local area, around here, around Mimico, and uh, I think I started out in house league, played a few years, went to uh, went to single A, then jumped up to double A, uh, played for the Toronto Red Wings. It's happened pretty quick. It's just from, like you said, from from playing my first years in for the London Knights and and playing there, and then winning the Mem Cup and winning the World Juniors to to going on and, and playing my first game in the NHL to to win the Stanley Cup and, and then win the Stanley Cup again. In the hockey world, it's, you, you're never safe anywhere you go. You're, you're always a, a target to be traded. If It could be a team getting rid of you or a team wants you. And I think for me, the Toronto Maple Leafs coming here was, is, is one of the best things. When it happened, I think it was just me and uh, Dan Carcillo were hanging out, watching, watching the draft. I sort of, sort of knew something was going on, something was brewing, and you can hear some, some rumors going around. So we sort of went through the first period, and nothing happened. And sort of sat around there, tried to, was going to take a nap. Uh, so we were just hanging out on the couch, and two minutes later, I got a call from Stan Bowman saying I was going to Toronto. So it was, uh, it was a sad day leaving Chicago, but I think. Uh, the tears were really uh, washed away because I was coming back home to Toronto. And you watch uh, guys like Matt Sundin and all those guys that, that play, uh, and now that you're sort of in the same room that they were uh, when they play and, and see what goes on, and, and it's, uh, it is surreal. And it's, it's, to be here, it's a privilege to play for the Toronto League Leafs. It's a privilege. It's, a, it's probably one of the best hockey city in, in all of hockey. And, this is where the hockey mecca is, is, is to play here. He emigrated over from, from Scotland in 86, just when I was born, and uh, they both came over here, and they didn't know a, a lick about hockey. I think it was more about soccer and, and, and football over in, in Europe uh, and soccer and that. But uh, my uncle was the one that sort of got my brother into it, and then it just trickled down to me, and I wanted to play, and, and now, uh, to see me wear the jersey, I guess that's one thing they, they got to be proud of, and, and, and to be here in Toronto with my family, and and to, uh, to 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 be here and just to be a Leaf and and have some fun and to be closer to my family is always great too. I try not to watch games when I'm when I'm when I'm sitting at home. I sort of flip back and forth from a show to to hockey. I don't want to watch the whole thing because I know. When you're watching, you, you see what happens, and you just want to be on the ice, and you want to be playing, and you get that itch. It was a fluke play, the way we went in the corner. It was just the skate came up and just went right in the, right there. It was, a, uh, it was probably one in a million that would happen. A little, uh, a little 
crack just where my uh, shin pad meets my, my skate and the skate just went right in the, right there. But uh, it was a fluke play, things like that happen in hockey and you just, you let them go. Sort of, uh, right after it happened, we, we got to the hospital. We, I waited a few hours to get to surgery. Uh, I was a little busy in the, in the, in the, in the, uh, in the hospital, so we got in there. I think I went in at 6 a.m. or that uh, to get the surgery all done, and was out and wheeled myself to the airport. I got on the, on the flight, and I was back home to Toronto. Uh, and then from there, I was just sitting at home. Uh, I couldn't really do much. Uh, I couldn't. I was on crutches, and you can't stand on it. And, yeah, you can't put weight on it for, I couldn't put weight on it for about three weeks. So the first few months were uh, pretty lazy, pretty boring. Uh, it was just a lot of Apple TV getting done at my house and watching a lot of TV shows. So uh, from there, it was uh, in a walking boot and then it was walking in that and trying to get around and starting to do upper body work inside. And the, uh, the trainers were working on my ankle, getting my rotation and the flexibility back. And then, from there is walking without a boot and then running and getting on a bike and now it's uh, on the ice and now it's just the last leg of it, uh, just getting the ice work done. I think this is the, uh, the crucial time that I'll be on the ice and getting everything back, my lungs, my, my legs and it takes a little bit of while for it to come back but I think right when I get it back I'll, I'll know and I'll, and I'll be ready. It's just coming in here my first year I get to, I think I get to know Bells and and Marty and Abed and uh, and Paul a little bit a little bit more. They've been great in what they do and they're, they've been the best. So I think uh, they've helped me out a lot with with being out for two months. I think uh, when you're out that long, you you don't know what to do with yourself. Uh, you almost want to lose it. But uh, I think they've been great with me by keeping me positive and, and just keeping me on the right track. Dave's injury is a little more unique in the sense that you don't really see too many of those types of injuries where uh, you get lacerations uh, of major tendons. So uh, the recovery is a little more in-depth, uh, requires a little more time, a little more patience. And uh, I mean, Dave's a great, great patient. You could say he's a hard worker and uh, anything we ask of him, he does. And uh, he seems to excel pretty, pretty quickly. My name is Ahmed Sindwani. I'm the assistant athletic therapist with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, I've been at this role here for uh, four years. Yeah, I think one of the biggest factors with, uh, with those guys is uh, trust, really. You build a good relationship with them, a good trust with them, um, and you try to incorporate multiple avenues of therapy to, to improve their, their injury and, and help them along their recovery. I'm Anthony Belzer. I'm the strength and conditioning coach with the Toronto Maple Leafs since 2008. Myself and that whoever that particular player is and at that time are, are working towards the same goal, which is uh, not only to get him back, but to get him back uh, better than, than when he last went out. Uh, it's an opportunity to kind of use, uh, use it as a silver lining and then find the positive aspect and the fact that we get to you know, train and, and, and improve uh, other parameters at the same time that we work on the injury and uh, make them stronger than ever. So I think for me it's rewarding to see them come back like that. And uh, I, I guess in some respect, you know, you develop a, a bond and that you know, you're working towards the same goal. They're competitive athletes, so they, they want to do anything they can to get, get that edge and to, to, to move ahead with his injury. So um, for the most part, I would say that uh, the guys, they listen well. They take the information we give them, the doctors give them, our, our trainers, uh, strength guys. Uh, we kind of put all our information together and, and channel it to the, to the athlete. And the athlete is pretty receptive in uh, understanding um, the magnitude of the injury and the progress that he needs to take to, to get to that next level. To see that player work hard for me is, uh, I think, where that bond comes from. So, you know, just to encourage them or to see them working and to be able to, to be a part of uh, how motivated and how focused they are. And there's a lot of ups and downs, and, and there's a lot of times when you know, the setback is challenging. But to see those guys uh, work through that is, I think, where that comes from. Just to, to be a part of that that segment of their uh, of their challenge. That's what I really appreciate more than anything else is what the players go through to to play in this city in front of these fans with all the media pressure. So that's kind of what I've. I've noticed. I think to really see Toronto in comparison to other places to really understand what it means is, is to just have a part of a heritage and, and adoration and uh, a specialness that uh, is, is above and beyond just being in the National Hockey League. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity to be a Toronto Maple Leaf aside from the, the unique aspect of being in the NHL. And you, guys, you guys really appreciate it and they really they embrace it. I think the players uh, they want to go to that next level. They want to do whatever they can to to make sure they, they, they compete every year and 
I, I think when it comes down to it, they want to win for, for the fans, for the city, uh, for each other. What do you think it means to be a Toronto Maple Leaf? Yeah, it means a lot to be a Toronto Maple Leaf. I know growing up here and, 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 uh, and seeing what they've done and what's gone on with, uh, with the Leafs, uh, it's, a, uh, it's, it's, it's one of the best organizations in the league. Uh, you see going back to, to when they're winning the Cups and, and with uh, the, the players that, are, that have been around here. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a privilege to wear the, the Toronto Maple Leaf on, that, on your chest and, and to play here at the ACC. So I think uh, it's, a, it's, it's a huge privilege to be here and, and I thank them for, for bringing me here to, to be here with the Toronto Maple Leafs.